We begin at 5 with the first of two funerals for the pair brutally murdered in Covington one week ago today. Retired priest Father Otis Young was laid to rest at the church he faithfully served. Hundreds of people attended that service as our community continues to come to terms with this awful crime. WDSU's Morgan lent us live in Covington with how Father Otis Young is now being remembered. Morgan. That's right, Trevor. So many people who knew Father Otis, as he was called, tell me he would support you in good times and bad. And they say it is that example that will now help them get through this tragedy. If St. Peter Catholic Church is a family, then priest Otis Young served as a father in more ways than one. People found him very real. He understood the brokenness of the world. He understood the brokenness of families. And he was there to grant counsel, advice, very solid but practical. They are parent-like qualities that make his death all the more heartbreaking to bear. There is no way that the human mind can grasp what has taken place. Archbishop Gregory Amon was on scene one week ago when the bodies of Father Otis, as he was called, and Ruth Pratt's were found burned behind a building in downtown Covington. Since then, he's been trying to help parishioners cope. A lot of people are asking, and very rightfully so, you know, where was Jesus when this was happening? And I think it's very clear to me that Jesus was present when this was happening. And he was crying and crying and crying. But even something so ugly can't crush a community entirely. So many attended Father Otis's funeral. The service had to be live streamed and chairs set up outside. Otis was loud. <laughs> he laughed loudly. He preached loudly. He banged around the rectory and the office loudly. <laughs> And that service, while sad, was laced with moments of laughter, remembering a man who loved to faithfully serve. He does call on us for forgiveness, and I have no doubt that both Father Otis and Ruth would have used in their last moments their voice to say that they forgive. Such a powerful sentiment from a longtime friend of Father Otis Young. Now, as for the second, second victim in this case, Ruth Pratt's, I'm told her funeral will be held on Saturday, also inside the church behind me. Reporting live in Covington, I'm Morgan Lentis, WDSU News.